Welcome back. Now that we got our data flow completed, let's create a pipeline so that we can execute the data flow and see the results coming out of it. So let's create a pipeline from here. And in the pipeline, you can pull in a data flow activity which can be used to invoke our data flow. So either you choose the existing data flow, that's what we got, or if you haven't got one, we can create a new one there. So DF transform cases and deaths and click OK on that. And we got the data flow activity here. This page is very similar to the others so we won't go through that again. And in settings, you can specify which kind of compute node and how big the cluster you want to execute this data flow. So this is for the Spark cluster that it's going to create at runtime and once it's executed, it's going to destroy them. So let's select small compute which is under the hood is general purpose, but you can go for a compute optimized or memory optimized cluster by selecting medium or large. So you choose that normally based on your workload, but in our case, small is good enough for what we're doing. And core count, we got the smallest one as well. And parameters, we don't have any parameters, we don't have any user properties either. So that is pretty much done. Let's name our pipeline. We could have one pipeline executing multiple data flows. So in this case, we got cases and deaths. And when you bring in hospitalization, you can put it into the same pipeline. But I'm going to create a separate pipeline for this one so we can rerun it every time we want to and we can test it as well. So this is PL process cases and deaths data is what I'm going to call and for each space we can specify underscore instead of space. Okay, so that's done. So we got a pipeline which is ready to be executed. So let's debug that first. If I click on debug. Okay, it's running at the moment. You can see the progress by clicking on the spectacles here. And as you can see here, it'll tell you how many columns are there, how many records it's read, and how many records being output, and all of that. So let's wait to see what's happening. Okay, so the data flow has now succeeded. So as you can see, it succeeded, and it didn't take any time to start up the cluster because we already had the debug cluster running, and there are eight transformations, and you can see everything that's happened. So if I want to look at pivot columns, it tells you these are the total number of columns, and it tells you the number of rows and how long it took. So this is quite useful information when you have performance issues, you can come and look to see what's happening and what's taking longer to do. Let's go back to the pipeline itself. So that succeeded as well here. Now that we've successfully debugged our transformation, we can turn off the data flow debug so that we can save some money. So let's click OK. And then let's switch back to our data storage explorer and see whether the files have been written. So this is under the processed folder and we expect to see ECDC and cases and deaths. As you can see in this case, we've got a number of files. So what it's done is, actually, it's distributed the data to different nodes. It split the files into roughly about, if I go to the last one, roughly about 200 files and it's done the work in chunks and then created the files as well. So let's open one of these files and have a look at it. So as you can see, this file has got the information we wanted. So we got the country code, population counts, and reported date and source. It does look like I don't have the lookup for Isle of Man within my country file, that's why that's been empty. Otherwise, everything seemed to be populated properly. And let's switch back to our data factory, and I want to tell you a couple of things. So in order to do a debug from here, you still need to have a data flow debug cluster running. If it's not running when you click debug on here, it's going to turn on and it's going to execute the cluster or create a cluster for you. But we can. When you run it using a trigger, then it's not going to expect a debug cluster. It'll create a cluster based on what you've specified here that is within your parameters here. So let's do that. So let's just publish the pipeline changes first. So I'm going to publish that. Okay, that's done. We haven't created a trigger for this pipeline yet, but we got another way to do that without creating a pipeline. So you can click on trigger now. So that'll run a manual trigger. So it's going to run it now, so it's running. 
So let's go to our monitor and have a look at that. So that should appear soon. Okay, so that's in here within our pipeline runs. Let's have a look at that. So as you can see here on the data flow status, it's acquiring compute. What that's doing is it's trying to create a Spark cluster for us that takes about 5 to 6 minutes and then it'll execute the pipeline. So we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, our pipeline's now completed. It took 3 minutes and 17 seconds to execute our transformation. So let's have a look at the details. And as you can see, the cluster startup time is 2 minutes and 15 seconds. And the transformations only took about a minute to execute. That is normal. So the clusters does take about 5 minutes to start up, so you need to allow for that time. One good thing with this is, actually, we asked Data Factory to start up a cluster, execute the transformations. But it started the cluster, we didn't have to do anything. And it's executed the transformation. It's also destroyed the cluster so you won't be charged for any cluster runtime after this, after the execution, which is really good. Before we finish, let's have a look at the settings for the sync. And we talked about changing it to single file, which is not recommended because it's going to be quite slow, but let's just do that. And when you output it to a single file, Data Factory also enforces you to optimize to single partition. So either you can do it here, or it's told you here so it sets single partition. As you can see, if you come back into optimize, it's already set it to single partition. So it'll write the data in one stream. So we're going to call this as caseindeaths.csv. Okay, let's publish the changes to Data Factory. Publishing's now completed, so let's go and execute the pipeline. So let's do a manual trigger again. Trigger now and click OK. So let's switch to the monitor and have a look. Okay, so that's running at the moment. And as we said before, it's going to take about 5 minutes or so. Let's leave it running and then we'll get back. Okay, as you can see, the pipeline's now finished execution. It took about 3 minutes and 58 seconds. Not a huge difference to the first execution, that's because we got a very small file to write. It wouldn't have taken that long to write that file. So let's have a look at the data. Let's do a refresh here, and cases and deaths, we got one file containing all of our information. So let's open the file and have a quick look at it. Okay, so that's the file with all our data in it and that looks good. So that's the end of this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.